Hi, I'm Tobin XL. I'm a chef for Redish Caterers. Okay, today I'm going to teach you how to cook partridge. This is a, quite a young bird. It's a lovely seasonal game bird. And so we're going to roast it today. Older birds, you could probably braise and it'd be just as nice. To start with, I'm just going to show you how to take the wishbone out. It's been prepared by the butcher. So all the guts are out. And it's been plucked, obviously. But the wishbone being taken out, it's the collarbone. And it'll make it a lot easier to carve. So just down either side of the wishbone here. And it connects at the top to the breastbone here. And you should be able to just get your fingers behind it and pop it up. Like that. Uh, with roasting game birds, the general rule is you cook it pink, medium. Uh, otherwise, it'll be quite tough and dry. This is a red leg partridge, which is from France. The British cousin would be the grey leg partridge, which is a slightly milder flavour. Whilst it's a very seasonal bird, there's a lot of different ways in which you can prepare it. You can grill it, spatchcock it and barbecue it, perhaps. Uh, take it apart into its component pieces, the breast and the legs. Just pan fry that very quickly, five minutes, and it's a lovely dish. Goes really nicely with uh, seasonal fruits, quince, apples, pears, late season berries. And uh, elderberries are very good at the beginning of the year. So I've got my hot pan, just a little bit of oil. It's rapeseed oil, a little bit of butter. Let's get it foaming. Don't make your fingers. So seasoning the bird inside and out with salt. It's a bit of a knob of butter again into the cavity, so it'll help baste it from the inside when it's cooking. The bay leaf, and a sprig of thyme. And that's pretty much ready to go. We place it first on, on one side. The idea is to colour evenly, a nice golden colour, all over the bird before it goes into the oven to roast. We're going to turn onto the breast now. This recipe can be used for, for most game birds, uh, quail, widgeon, teal, that sort of thing. Small portion sized game birds go really well in this way. I'm just going to finish colouring the bird on its back, just for another couple of minutes. Just want that nice golden colour, it's really important to brown the skin. A lot of the flavours are going to come from the caramelisation. It's a really simple garnish with, uh, with a game bird, or any sort of game really. Bacon and prunes, they're lovely together and they really bring out the sweet, gamey flavour of this bird, even a mild one such as a partridge. Just uh, laying out this bacon nice and thin, it helps roll up with the prune and keeps it tight. And then simply get your pitted prune. You can stuff it with an almond, it's quite a nice garnish. Or even use the hearts from the, uh, from the partridge. Just roll it so it's nice and tight. And that's it, and just feed it onto your skewer like that, just a couple per bird. And we're going to start off with a breast down. It's great to use your, your, your frying pan in the oven, but of course only do so if the handle is oven proof. Okay, the parts have been in the oven for about five minutes now. Just going to turn it over. Have a little look. A bit more butter and just baste it. It's really important, especially with game birds, because they dry out easily. Keep basting it. Lots and lots of butter. Back in the oven for about three or four minutes. So that's been another four minutes in the oven at 200. Just going to turn it over onto the other leg. You can see it's not cooked yet, it's still a little bit rare. So a couple more minutes and it'll be there. So that's been about three more minutes. It's about 12 in total for a bird that big. It goes up to maybe 15 minutes if you have something slightly larger. You can check it's cooked in a couple of different ways. Just by touch. And you want a medium, sort of, you know, a pink. Pink throughout, through the middle. So a medium temperature. So that feels springy, not firm, but not yielding. 
like a medium steak. Another way just to put this through the skewer all the way through to the middle of the, the breastbone and just test it on your lip. It should feel warm. If you have a temperature probe, perhaps around 55, 58 degrees before it's rested. Now I'm going to rest the bird on its chest for, like, for a good 10 minutes. That will relax the meat and uh, have a more even temperature and a, and, a, and a nice soft consistency throughout. Okay, so whilst the partridge is resting, I'm just going to make a quick pan jus, a pan sauce to go with it. These are shallots, just chopped up. And this is the same pan I cooked the partridge in, just wiped out, and a bit of butter. And that's going to collect all the lovely flavours from the bottom of the pan the partridge was cooking in and put it into the sauce. Just a minute or so, just to sweat them down. Add about half a clove of garlic, grated. Again, sweat it down. So the shallots and garlic have been sweating in the pan for a couple of minutes now. The flavour's mellowed as they've, uh, as they've sweated. And they've collected all the flavour from the bottom of the pan partridge was in. So I'm just going to add a good slug of sherry, which will further deglaze the pan, which means pick up all the sediment, all the, all the nice meaty bits off the bottom of the pan. Now I'm going to add, this is a chicken stock, a brown chicken stock. And again, about 150 mils of that, 25 mils of sherry, 150 of stock. We're going to let that reduce down. It's just the juices from the resting tray. From this, come out of the partridge, I've just been uh, just resting for about 10, 10 minutes, relaxing. Now you can serve your partridge like this, which is lovely. It can be a bit fiddly at a dinner party if people don't really know how to break it down. So you can do it for them before you serve it. But yep, along the leg, Coming through along the breast, in between the breast and the thigh. Pop the hip bone like that. And cut in between the hip bone through the cartilage. There we are. So the sauce is reduced down. A little bit of salt. Just going to pass this through a sieve. So all the flavour that's been extracted and infused into the sauce is in there. Okay, just going to finish breaking apart our, uh, our partridge now. Going along, along the, uh, the breastbone here, just either side of them, as if you're taking the breast off a chicken, it's exactly the same. This is just some salt baked beetroot. There's a recipe for this on the, on the website. Just going to garnish the plate with that. Just the sauce now, around and over the partridge. Your uh, devil's on horseback, it's nestled in. And there you have it, a really easy way to cook partridge.